reality could be like an onion. We don't know. Mm. But it could be like an onion to where you think you know you're studying a layer of an onion and then you peel it away and there's more. And you keep doing it and there's an infinite number of layers. With intelligence, there's the same kind of component to where we think we know. We got it. We figured out. We figured out how to beat the human world champion in chess. We solved intelligence. And then we tried the next thing. Wait a minute. Go is really difficult to solve as a game. And then you say, okay, that's... Uh, I've, I came up when the game of Go was impossible for artificial intelligence systems to beat and have now recently have been beaten. Within and the last, like, five years, right? The next the last five years. There's a lot of technical, fascinating things of why that victory is interesting and important for artificial intelligence. It requires creativity, correct? It, it does not. It, no? It just exhibits creativity. Oh. So uh, the technical aspects of why AlphaGo from Google DeepMind that – that was the the designers and the builders of the system that was the victor they did a few very interesting technical things where essentially you develop a neural network this is this type of artificial intelligence system that looks at a board of go has a lot of elements on it is black and white pieces and is able to tell you how good is this situation and how can i make it better and that idea, so chess players can do this. I'm not actually that familiar with the game of Go, so I can speak to, I'm Russian, so chess to us is romanticized. It's a beautiful game. Uh, I think that there, you look at a board and all your previous experiences, all the things you've developed over tons of years of practice and thinking, you get this instinct of what is the right path to, to, to follow. And that's exactly what the neural network is doing. And some of the in, some of the paths it has come up with are surprising to other world champions. So in that sense, it says, well, this thing is exhibiting creativity because it's coming up with solutions that are something that's outside the box thinking from the perspective of the human. When, why, why do you differentiate between requires creativity and exhibits creativity? I think... One, because we don't really understand what creativity is. Mm. So it, it's almost, it, it's on the level of concepts such as consciousness. For example, the question which there's a lot of thinking about whether creating something intelligent requires consciousness, requires for us to be actual living beings aware of our own existence. In the same way, does doing something like building an autonomous vehicle, that's the area where I work in, does that require creativity? Does that even require something like consciousness and self-awareness? I mean, I'm sure in LA, there's some degree of creativity required to navigate traffic. And in that sense, you, you start to think, are there solutions that are outside of the box that an AI system needs to create? It, it's, once you start to build it, you realize that to us humans, certain things appear creative, certain things don't, certain things we take for granted, certain things we find beautiful, and certain things we're like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's boring. Well, there's creativity in different levels, right? There's creativity like to write The Stand, a Stephen King novel. Yeah, that great. requires creativity. There's something about his, he's creating these stories, he's giving voices to these characters, he's developing these scenarios and these dramatic sequences in the book that's going to get you really sucked in, that's, that's almost undeniable creativity, right? Is it? Is so it? Yeah. It's, uh, he's imagining a world. Mm -hmm. What is it? Always oh, set in uh, New Hampshire, Massachusetts. A lot it's of it's Maine. Maine, yeah. that's right. So he's imagining a world and imagining the emotion of different levels surrounding that world. Yeah, that's, that's creative. Although if you there's a few really good books, including his own, that talks about writing. Uh, yeah, he's got a great book on writing. And on, it's actually called On Writing. On, on, on writing. writing. Yeah. If there's anyone who can write a book on writing, it should be Stephen King. Mm. Uh, I think Stephen Pressfield. I hope I'm not mm -hmm. saying the, the wrong War thing. of Art. The War of Art, beautiful yeah. book. And I would say, if from my recollection, they don't necessarily talk about creativity very much. That it's really hard work of putting in the hours of every day of just grinding it out. Well, Pressfield talks about the muse. Pressfield th th speaks of it almost in like a strange, mystical, mystical sort of connection to the unknown. Because right. he, he almost, 
I'm not even exactly sure if he believes in the muse, but he, I think if I could put words in his mouth, I have met him. He's a great guy. He was on the podcast once. I think the way he treats it is that if, if you decide the muse is real and you show up every day and you write as if the muse is real, you get the benefits of the muse being real. <laughs> that's right. Whether or not there's actually a muse that's giving you these wonderful ideas. And what is the muse? So I think of artificial intelligence the same way. There's a quote by uh, Pamela uh, McCordick from 1979 book that I really like. Uh, when she talks about the history of artificial intelligence. AI began with an ancient wish to forge the gods. And to me, gods, broadly speaking, or religions, represents, it's kind of like the muse. It represents the limits of possibility, the limits of our imagination. So it's this thing that we don't quite understand. That is the muse. That is God. This, uh, us, us chimps are very narrow in our ability to perceive and understand the world. And there's clearly a much bigger, beautiful, mysterious world out there. And God or the muse represents that world. And for many people, I think throughout history, and especially in the, in the past sort of 100 years, artificial intelligence has become to represent that a little bit to the thing which we don't understand and we crave, we're both terrified and we crave in creating this thing that is greater, that is able to understand the world better than us. And that, in that sense, artificial intelligence is the desire to create the muse, this other, this imaginary thing. And I think the, one of the beautiful things, if you talk about everybody from Elon Musk to Sam Harris to all the people thinking about this, is that there is a mix of fear of that, of, of that unknown, of creating that unknown, and an excitement for it. Because there's something in human nature that desires creating that. Because like I said, creating is how you understand. Mm. Did you initially study biology? Did you study the actual development of the mind or what, what is known about the, the evolution of the human mind? of the human mind yeah uh, so my path is different as it's the same for a lot of computer scientists and roboticists is we uh, ignore biology neuroscience the physiology anatomy of our own bodies it, and there's a lot of beliefs now that you should really study biology you should study neuroscience you should study our own brain the actual chemistry, what's happening, what, what is actually, how are the neurons interconnected, all the different kinds of systems in there. So that is a little bit of a blind spot, or it's a big blind spot. But the problem is, so I started with more philosophy almost. It's where, um, if you think Sam Harris, has, in the last couple of years, has started kind of thinking about artificial intelligence. And he, he has a background in neuroscience, but he's also a philosopher. And I started there by reading Camus or Nietzsche or Dostoevsky, thinking what is, what is intelligence? What is human morality, uh, will? Uh, so all of these concepts give you the context for which you can then start studying these problems. And then I, I said, there's a, there's a magic that happens when you build a robot that drives around. I mean, your father, um, uh, I'd like to be, but I'm not yet. <laughs> uh, there's a creation aspect that's wonderful, that's incredible. It's For me, I don't have any children at the moment, but the, the act of creating a robot where you programmed it and it moves around and it senses the world is, this, is, is, a, is a magical moment. Do 